Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to go through the basic steps of roughing out a sign holding bear or a welcome bear top to bottom. This entire rough out took me approximately 20 minutes to do. And <clears throat> this is just the, the, the front and the sides. This is what I call the three quarter rough out. I didn't do a lot on the back. Um, because that, that all usually comes after getting the fronts and the sides established anyway. Here you can see the triangular top cut. If you look at the top of the log and, and you make a triangle from the points of the nose to the points of the ears, uh, that's what we're doing here and there. I'm cutting a line for the ears all the way across, and there's the line for the forehead and the eyebrows all the way across. And then you see there, I make the little rounded cut approximately where the nose is going to come out. And this is just range again. You'll see that I go back and I even trim. I trim in. And I see that's a sweep cut. And what I'm doing is making that just to get rid of material. It's not, has nothing to do with the final outcome or the shape of the, of the uh, carving. Uh, the sweep cut is just a little bit of a curve cut off the bottom to hurry up the process without getting hurried. Um, kind of what I'm trying to show here is that smoother really is faster. Sometimes slower is faster if you just take your time. And, you know, granted I've sped up the film because I did not want this to be a 20 some minute video. And I did not want to bore people with, you know, you've seen me do these bears. You've, I do have a couple of videos where they're shown in real time, uh, point of uh, view, the POV uh, videos, where I had a helmet cam, you can see everything that I do in those, pretty much the same thing here, it's, uh, but what you're going to see here today is, I'm going to rough out the entire bear from head to toe and he'll be holding a sign. So that's where you can see kind of the proportions that I go by. Usually the from the shoulders down to the hips is usually about twice the length of, of the overall head of the hair. And then from the hips down to the feet, that's usually another twice the height of the head length down. And there you see I'm going back in, just getting the nose ranged in using that triangular. There's two triangles on the head. There's the triangle on the top and then there's the triangle off the front of the nose. And that, that gives you the general idea of things. You see, uh, just taking my time, whittling away. Once you kind of get that rounded shape of the head, then you can come off of that and start to cut your shoulder line. And then start ranging in the dip in between the ears, rounding the ears a little bit more. And see there's his neckline, and there I'm cleaning the ears up a little bit. Now one thing I do want to say, if you notice at the beginning of the video I showed the tip of the bar with the chain on it, and if you notice those teeth on the chain, that's a, uh, called full house chain, it's a, it's a tooth, there's a cutter on every link, there's no, there's no skip or no spaces. Uh, I just find them on eBay and, uh, and then I cut them to length, I have a riveter chain breaker you can see that set up in my other videos I even show how to use it in one video and if you have the right power the full house chain makes cutting and removing wood a lot easier and faster a lot smoother and I'm not putting a lot of pressure on the saw and the, the chain is a little bit a little bit beat up I do have to give it some sharpening um, but it's still cutting good. As long as you have good oil flow, 
and your chain is fairly sharp, you can uh, you can move right along without without getting too hurried. And the thing I like about the full house chain is you can see that that I'm doing those kind of twisty twisty cuts in and under the chin and around the neckline. It it really helps when you get the revs and some power behind it. It really helps uh, to establish shapes quicker if you have a chain that, that cuts good when you twist. And the other thing that helps that is I do trim the backs of the chain off. It, it, uh, if, if you don't trim the backs of the chain off, essentially the chain is going to want to cut a lot straighter, like straight in, more like a kerf cut. Um, and here you can see that I'm able, I'm able to just kind of work a nice straight clean cut and I'm, I'm not going in real fast and deep. I'm just kind of work it back and forth. And here you see I'm establishing going in with the neckline where the back of the sign's going to be and pulling that first arm out of the carving. Now if you if you look over on the left side of the screen you'll see where I did a different type of cut. That's going to be the paw that's up on top of the sign. This paw comes down and holds the side of the sign. And you'll see that appear here in a minute or so, a minute or two. Um, There we're doing the side of the sign down to that left paw that's going to be holding the side. And so you can see it appearing. Remove that chunk. Now we're going to work the very top of the sign. Just cut in a little. Then at the top, there's the end of his right paw. And now here, I draw in the right paw and go down to his elbow. So he's, he has a bent elbow. And it's always good to clean the bark off. Usually I start with logs with no bark on them. But I wanted to show you guys a log with bark on it because that's how most people carve. Most people will see the, see the wood that I start with normal occasions and they'll say, is that special wood? Did you buy it somewhere? Like, no, I, I clean them all usually before I use them. But when I clean them, I usually go a lot deeper in. I start with a bigger diameter log and then cut out a lot of the outside, like the sap wood, um, because that's weaker wood and pine. But here I'm using spruce. So with spruce, you can get away with a little bit more of using the outside of log because it's it's more consistent than pine usually. So here I'm just trimming the back. You can see I have now I have the paws established whereabouts they're going to be. There I'm cutting the front of the sign. There it goes. And there now I'm cutting into the shoulders and getting the neckline a little more clean. Cutting in behind under the chin. And you just keep working back and forth. There's the entire front of the sign. You see how I skipped? I skipped over the right paw or the left paw on the side. I didn't go all the way through until I was about three inches down. And there I'm cutting the end of the left paw and I just pull that piece away. And there is your left paw. There, draw on the side of the, the underneath of the arm. You see, I'm leaving stuff. I'm not, I'm not being real picky about getting it perfect right now. This is just rough out. There's the side of the sign, both sides, and now we're gonna get down in the underneath the arms, and there I'm kind of cutting the shape. You see where. I'm looking at the neckline where it comes out. The bear has a belly and he's going to kind of have a knee so that leg is going to 
it's going to come out a little bit and then it's going to taper back to the foot. And this is just rough. There we're going to cut in the side of the leg and the hip. And there's the other one. And uh, well, that's about how we do it. And I'll just uh, I'll just leave you guys now to watch the rest of the video and not hear me talk anymore. and uh, be sure to like and subscribe and check out my other videos.